Here I'm holding Immolation's album, Acts of God. Decibel Magazine and Nuclear Blast put this out as a limited edition long box alongside the standard vinyl cassette and CD versions. It's a novelty item that's a throwback to the early days of CDs. In the late 1980s and early 1990s, people were slowly rebuying their vinyl and tape collections on CD. With the CD's growing popularity, some stores were slow to adapt with the change. Having more CDs for sale meant that they had to install new shelves that could display them. Switching to CD shelves was expensive. A short-term fix was the long box. The long box was big enough to be displayed in record shelves, often side by side. The standard long box was about 12 inches tall, like a record. They were so big that they couldn't fit on a lot of regular CD shelves. Because of their size, it was harder for people who tried stealing from the stores. Long boxes often looked generic, with the artwork taking up only a fraction of the box. Sometimes they would have the full artwork that wouldn't fit on a CD booklet, or the CD cover would be stretched and reworked. The only thing filling the space inside was the CD case, leaving plenty of unused room. CDs eventually became more colorful and had better packaging, so it became harder to justify why CDs needed long boxes. Most people saw them as unnecessary and a waste of space in general, so they threw the boxes away. Like video game boxes, people threw them away not knowing they would be collector's items decades later. Since people mostly threw them away, long boxes became an environmental concern. Artists complained about the wastefulness of long boxes, including David Byrne, who had a sticker on one of his albums that said, this is garbage. These environmental concerns, as well as cost concerns, brought about Ban the Box. A founder of Rykodisc, Robert Simons, started the Ban the Box movement, and it gained support as labels and artists spoke out publicly against long boxes. The movement's goal was to discontinue long boxes by encouraging consumers to tell record stores they were against them, and by putting pressure on record labels. As a joke, Spinal Tap released an extra long box for their album Break Like the Wind, where the box was 18 inches tall instead of the standard 12. Their reasoning for this was that they wanted to give people more to recycle. R.E.M. put long boxes to political use with their album Out of Time. To advance the Rock the Vote campaign, Warner Brothers convinced R.E.M. to print their long box with a petition people could sign in support of the Motor Voter Bill. This bill would allow for people to register to vote when they got a driver's license or when they signed up for social services. Over 10,000 signed out of time long box petitions were brought into a Senate hearing about a month after the album release. The bill was signed into law as the National Voter Registration Act of 1993, taking effect in 1995. By April 1993, long boxes were officially discontinued. The environmental concerns were heated, and record distributors were able to save millions of dollars by not manufacturing them. As for the theft problem, some stores adopted locking plastic cases that could be reused. Some of them were tall enough to fit in record shelves for those who still hadn't switched to CD display shelves. But most major retailers weren't selling vinyl by then anyway. CD long boxes were meant to be transitional, similar to the cassette long box. Long boxes have since become collector's items, and sometimes they're made as novelty items, like this Immolation album. And in this size, the artwork looks grander. Grind on.